about Penny putting this in a global context, what is taking place here at the Occupy Wall Street encampment? Well, what I found fascinating being at Wall Street is how similar it is to protests that I've seen in London over the past six months. And I've talked to activists from Spain and elsewhere who've said that this is exactly the same thing, just a slight cultural differences, but it's exactly the same open space, non-hierarchical leadership structure, you know, your free kitchens, your welcoming atmosphere. It's really, really very similar. And it's, it's striking to me how much this seems to be not about America, or about any individual country, but about a global uprising. You've seen um, from below, really with no clear direction, but a kind of a, a defined sense that something needs to change. And of course, the reaction of the authorities is very, very similar as well. Um, kettling became uh, more well known when it was used in London over the winter. And it really... Um, is a form of collective punishment when it was used in the mass student protests um, outside the Houses of Parliament and in Whitehall in December and November. That's what Those were thousands and thousands of young people, uh, many of whom were taken out and arrested, some of whom were targeted later. And as has been said, it's really a form of collective punishment designed to show people that they can't come out on the streets, they can't come out and dissent. It's designed to deter dissent in a age where really the people in power don't have much to, much else to offer people and n not, they don't have any really uh, other reason to tell them not to come out and dissent. Uh, when I was um, marching up to the bridge uh, the other day, I got a, a little chill down my spine when I heard somebody a few steps ahead of me say, well, they can't arrest everyone. And I was like... Yes, yes they can, <laughs> having been in London, and um, that's when I decided to leave, um, because it seemed like something big was going to happen. Can you talk more about the media coverage? The media coverage, again, I've seen uh, something very similar to what happened in London and what's been happening in Britain, which is that there's been a lot of bias, a lot of writing off of these people as crusty hippies, students, people without jobs, which is really, really very untrue. I've been down there, I've met a lot of people who are employed, people who are all different ages, all different backgrounds. and. Everyone starts off by trying to dismiss these protesters. Then they start off by trying to demonise and criminalise these protesters and saying they're obstructing public highways, they're, you know, they're, they're making a nuisance of themselves. And then, hopefully then, they'll really start to listen and people have to decide what they're going to do then. I wanted to uh, raise this issue that we've just learned of J.P. Morgan Chase recently donating an unprecedented $4.6 million to the New York City Police Foundation. The gift in the largest in the history of the foundation will enable the New York City Police to strengthen security in New York. The money will pay for a 1,000 new patrol car laptops, they say, as well as monitoring software in the NYPD's main data center. The significance of this, Marissa? Uh, the significance, sorry, of this marina. Oh, it's massive. I mean, this is something then, I mean, and ironically, too, just a little background, where the, when the protesters, when Occupy Wall Street began, it was not at first going to occupy the Liberty Plaza. It was actually Chase Plaza. And preemptively, the police closed off that plaza, mm -hmm. even though it was publicly announced and it was supposed to have public access. They closed it off to protesters. So that's a potential lawsuit there already. Um,